All right. On our last video, I didn't tell us that we probably need to put in a project. I don't know that I'm going to do that right here, but uh, because it's on the video and I, I can't think of what I want to call this project, <laughs> so that's a good reason not to. But we're going to go ahead and jump down to our windows, the glass and doors. There's something to keep in mind. You, you, anything here that is not a white block, you cannot enter any information in there. Okay, if you try to enter the information on these points here, I'll show you what happens. I'm just going to randomly put some numbers. And you see what jumped up. It tells me, uh-uh, you can't do that. And there's a reason why. So don't, don't get discouraged. Let's go down here to where it says glass. Okay. Now we're going to be using table 2 and table 3 to get this identification for our glass. Now we're going to have to come up with the heating U values and the cooling HTMs. We're going to go to our J manual once again. And bear with me as I look for the glass schedule. And you notice this is table 2 glass and door schedule. Now our windows, and I'm hoping I'm not losing you here, it gives us our dimensions on our example and identifies the windows with A and B. But our description of the windows, it says all windows are double pane, clear glass, operable sash with a wood frame. That's a lot of information I know, but we got to go through there. We find that if we look through our table two, we find that we have clear glass under this heading here, double pane, operable window, or sliding glass door. Well, we're not dealing with a sliding glass door, but we are dealing with the double pane, operable window. That is under item number 1D-C. Our uh, U value is a .07 and that is if, if it's a metal with no break. Well, that's not what we had. We had a wood frame. Our wood frame U value is 0.57. So I will enter that 0.57 at that particular case. But what have I not done? I have not identified the windows. If you recall, I had A windows and B windows. And I, I, one way that you uh, can do this to make it easier as you go through here is to go ahead and identify not individual windows but individual scenarios of each window. I need to put in the 1D-C as a reference. I'm going to do that now. 1D-C that is my reference back to my J manual. If you recall, I said I had A windows and B windows. Orientation is also a consideration. And when we, if we go back and look, we will see that we have A windows on both the north, east, and south side of our particular building. So this is going to be the 1D-CA North, N-O-R-T-H. I hope I'm, my spelling's correct there. Okay, you remember the U value for the heating while I'm here? Was it 0.57? Does that sound correct? And I don't have that in front of me, but I think it was 0.57. <clears throat> and uh, before we go to the cooling HTM, I want to go ahead and get all of my windows identified. We have a one D, and our spreadsheet's trying to help us out, but it's not right now because this is going to be a different window. A B, but it is also on the north side. Okay, issue value is going to be identical. For heating, that does not change. Okay. Now, 
I also have an eastern exposure for A and Bs. So I need to put in, once again, 1, D, dash, C, A, east. Once again, I put in the U value of 0.57. Okay. And I also have a 1, D, dash, C, B window with an eastern exposure. Okay. Something looks different there. 1, D, dash, C. Okay, it's just the way I spaced it out, but it's the same thing. Uh, 0.57. Okay, and on our southern exposure, we have A windows, but some of our A windows are covered with a porch. So that's going to cause us to have another entry also. I'll go ahead and put that in now. 1, D, dash, C, south. And one more time, a 1, D, dash, C, um, south, S-O-U-T-H. You can see my typing skills are terrible, but this ain't about typing, thank goodness. And this is a covered, so we're going to put covered. Or shaded. I think it would probably be proper to call it shaded. Okay, now those U values once again are the same thing 0 0.57 and 0 0.57. We're going to go to our, our uh, building to take a look at what I've just done and I'm going to point out the different windows. You can see the B window on the north side. There's our orientation shown with the compass reading. This is B on the north side, A on the uh, north side. You have A windows on the east side, a B window on the east side. On the south side you have an A window and more A windows but over a covered open porch. So each one of those is a different orientation or condition that must be identified. Now you notice that we have not shown our cooling HTM yet and the reason being because we need to go to another part of the J manual and you remember I said that was either in 2A or 3A. Give me a moment to get to that particular part. Aha. Uh -huh. And by the way, the marks that you see on this uh, J manual papers, try not to pay them any attention. Uh, someone scribbled on it, and I don't know who. It may have been me, but they may not be telling you the truth. Okay. We don't have any internal shading on our particular windows, and we're going to be looking under the 3A table, the U value. It shows a point. Five, six, that's, that's not quite a big difference, but we, we're looking at our 15 degree differential more than anything else. That's the design cooling temperature differential. We also have to consider the orientation, north, northeast, northwest, east or west, southeast or southwest or south. If you recall, we had windows on the north side that t tells us the HTM for that rough opening will be 21 on the north side. So we go ahead and fill in our north side cooling HTM of 21. Oops, that changed things. Okay, this is also a north side window which will give us another 21. Now, 
Our next window is ori orientation is on the east side and we need to find that information from our J manual once again. We go and we find under east or west that that is going to give us an HTM of 70. Okay, quite a bit of difference between east and west and north when it comes to temperature uh, losses and gains. We put the 70 to that window, our windows, and also the eastern exposure, the other eastern exposure, uh, exposed window. So now we have those. Now our southern exposure, we need to go to this point right here. And once again, I have to go back to my J manual. You've got to have your J manual to do this. If you don't have a J manual, you can't, it's just no way to do it. Okay, we look down once again for the southern exposure, and I see a 35 right there. So the, that window is going to take a 35. All right? Both the south shaded and the uh, south A windows. Both of them are A windows, A style windows. 35. Oops. Okay. Now, you're probably wondering why in the world are you worried about that shaded? Well, let's see what happens here. We're going to move over to our glass schedule. We take the tab at the bottom where it says glass schedule and let's bring it up. As you see, our information is blank over here. But you remember the information we added? There it is. Our pull down gives us the northern exposure, a window, and we're going to go ahead and get all those out here now. There's my northern exposure V window. There's my eastern exposure A window. My eastern exposure B window. My south exposure A window. I, I didn't put the A in there, but there were both A's on the south side. See, that was a mistake on my part. And there is the south shaded window. Okay, this is where it does make a difference. I must, once again, show which way they're facing. North, you can see how that information that we had earlier is helping us. Like I said, my typing skills are not the best in the world, and I think you see that right now. Even, even the mouse skills don't seem to be doing too good with me. Okay, uh, that was supposed to be a... Let's change that. That should have been the A East. Okay. East West. East West. South. And once again, South. Okay, that gets us that column. Notice that it asks for the height of the opening. Okay, now we're looking at the, the, the uh, rough end. That's this right here. Okay, if we look, and I know we, we, we uh probably saying, well, how in the world am I going to know that? Well, if it's not on your diagram or your plans, hopefully it will be. If you don't know, you may have to go out to the site and get that. We have our exterior windows, or our, our windows, excuse me, it's showing the A windows are three wide by four high. Our B windows are three wide by two high. But we're only concerned about the height of the window at this particular time. So our height of an opening, am I not uh, correct when I say that the uh, A windows were four? Okay, so we put four, that's four feet. Okay, the B windows were how high? Were they two? I'll go back. Three. Uh, I'm sorry, two. Two. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And like I said, y'all bear with us. We're, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> right. You're, do, you're doing feet, great, David. Four, four foot on the A windows. The B windows are two. 
and the A windows on the south, both of those were four. Okay, so we now have that column. Now the distance of overhang. In our example, there's only one that has any overhang. Now I know in real life that may not be true. You usually have some kind of eave. Well, that's something to consider. Uh, a soffit of some type, but we're, we're uh, saying that ours does not. Only the porch. So I'm going to start up here at the top on the north side, the distance of overhang. That's this, this right here, looking at the diagram. We have zero. Zero, 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 and our last one, which is shaded, has a four foot overhang. If you can make out on that uh, particular diagram, each one of those squares is equivalent to two feet on our example. So there's a four foot covered porch in that particular case. All right. Here again is something that you have to know, possibly have to be, be in the field to be able to get this information. If you have a good set of uh, plans, it should be on the set of plans in some uh, elevation drawings. But ours just tells us that this distance from the overhang is two foot. We're using that as, as a constant for all of ours. Two foot from the window opening to the overhang. Or the soffit is another way to look at that. Okay, now we're still not through. If we had a a, uh, I always call them a bay window. They they're calling it a projected window or a French door. Then we would have to go in and identify that. Uh, cooling HTM adjustment, believe it or not, something as simple as a bug screen, and I'll show you that right here. You see that we have an option of a bug screen or nothing. We're, we're saying that we don't have any screens on our windows. Okay? And I always kind of kid around about that. Uh, we, we just have a little fun here. We always talk about we want our windows to work and and uh, we need those screens on there and all that. And I tell you what, you go into most homes or most businesses and it would take you all day just to get the window to operate because they've been painted shut or hadn't been moved in years and years and years. Just goes to show you how much we really do, do depend upon our conditioned air uh, services that we have. Okay, now, we're still not done with the windows. We still got to do a little more. Okay. Let's go back to our J1 right here. Notice that some of our information is already being populated on the J1 uh, spreadsheet. Now, we're going to be doing the block load, which means the entire structure, which is what the equipment is going to be uh, designed for. Okay, we're going to call this the block load. All right, now by looking at our plan, we need to come up with the net area of each window. On our north side, I recall that we only had one A-type window on the north side. Its dimension was three by four. And if my math is working correctly, that's still 12 square feet. Three by four, that's, that's gonna give you the square feet. Did we have a B window on the north side? Yes, we did. Its dimensions was three times two, or six square feet. Okay. On the east side, we had two A style windows, so we have a total of 24 square feet of A windows. Notice the way the spreadsheet is being populated as we enter our square footage of the windows. Okay. On the uh, East side, we had one B window. So once again, the B window is a six square foot uh, item. And our south exposure, we have one A window. 
that points south that is not covered, and we have two A windows, which is a total of 24 square feet. I think it's kind of interesting that you notice, notice that all our BTUs are being calculated for us. If you've ever done this by just a simple calculator and, a, and, and by pencil, if you will, you have, if you've never done it, you have no idea how much time and effort this sheet really helps. Uh, but I think it's interesting, if you notice the cooling HTM for the shaded, we're not even given a value. Shading makes a big difference when it comes to the amount of uh, cooling uh, load. Now, your HTM or the heating, you have to look at a structure as being no sunshine, no heat from any other places, including internal loads. I have seen a lot of people make mistakes, especially on the commercial end, where they want to add the internal loads inside a structure for the heating to, 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 if you will, give you credit for some of the heating that comes from the inside. Unfortunately, most buildings don't always stay uh, the same use as what they were originally designed for. So that can be very dangerous. And while I'm thinking on this, in homes a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I've got a lot of trees around my home and, and it's really shaded. Do I really need that big of a unit because I'm going to have that shade? I don't know about where you're at, but we do have uh, severe weather to come through from time to time in our area. And those beautiful trees may not be there tomorrow after a storm comes through. And you know a tree doesn't grow up overnight. So I would never, ever, ever use the vegetation, uh, the exterior vegetation to uh, decrease my loads for uh, cooling. That's just, like I said, that's, that's some lessons I've, I've seen. I wouldn't say that I ever did it, but you know. <laughs> Good <laughs> advice, David. Great, great advice. All right. We're going to be moving on into the uh, doors in just a minute, but that, that gets our glass.